silicone dust storm right in my face. <laughs> Good times are had by all. Stuff's not cheap. It's called roof bacon. Huh? It's got a 440. Come on. I want to go to college anyway, did you? It's looking like a lot of work. That's what kids do. I definitely got to keep peeling back. Digging away at the old luggage rack. <laughs> Holy cow! Oh, oh! Lo and behold, we're driving to go look at a holiday rambler. Also known as the Eterna Driz. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. We're working on a 1976 Dodge Cruise Air RV. It's seen some better days, but we're going to give it some new life. So finally, the sun is out. It's getting to be springtime. I think we're ready to start tackling the roof. Um, we're going to need some dry weather to do that, and so no better time than now. Yeah, and this is kind of a nerve-wracking video because looking online, it seems like there's a couple things with RVs that people are very opinionated about. And so I know we probably are going to take an approach that doesn't make everyone happy, um, but a roof is definitely one area where people have strong opinions. And weirdly enough, whether to use toilet paper is in a, some people put it in the garbage can. <laughs> Anyway, we won't get into that today, but we are going to tackle the roof and we're happy to have you here with us. So I don't know if we've shown you any shots of the roof yet, but what we're dealing with is some sort of asphalt type of material. In Michigan, we call it asphalt. <laughs> apparently, no. apparently Michigan and Australia. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, uh, it's some sort of tar based material. So our first step is to get off some of this old sealant where you can see it's peeling up. Um, it's not in very good shape. And then there's other, uh, this asphalt material. Um, we will wind up peeling up the stuff that's loose here. You can see it's cracked in different places. And uh, so we'll try to get it up as much of that loose stuff as possible. And then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, when we first got this, I put a picture of this roof on a RV Facebook page and people thought it was a joke but it's not a joke someone really used like residential roofing material and I think it was you know it was at a campground where they probably didn't plan on it moving again um, so maybe it would have been okay if it was stationary but once you start driving it this stuff's not meant to be moved around and it's definitely cracking up. We also have a pretty smashed up cover to our air conditioner, which we believe actually works. So um, we're probably going to be in the market for a new cover for this guy. As you can see, the original roof roof material was aluminum. Um, so that this uh, asphalt material is, of course, covering that. The problem with taking this off and trying to replace the aluminum and going with some sort of like rubber roof like a EPDM roof um, membrane is the fact that this whole uh, aluminum roof is actually built into the front and back wall of the RV they kind of wrap into each other and so it would mean tearing apart the rear wall and maybe the front wall in order to just take off the aluminum and go with the membrane. So that's why we are faced with just trying to repair it the way that it is and make it work. Um, and the, the aluminum is actually glued to the interior insulation and roof. So um, we'd have to wind up tearing up out the whole interior ceiling, which is not actually in bad shape. Right. This is kind of cracked up especially around the vents and things and you can tell what they did was they they actually put that coating over whatever they used it looks like uh, maybe a silicone sealant or something <laughs> I don't know uh, but anyway you know, whatever's going on there it definitely did not bond well or work well together yeah I think the worst parts are definitely where they took this black stuff ew, yeah. and went over the old sealant yeah. Um, the actual flat part of the roof, I mean, obviously you don't want to leave it this way with all these little cracky deals, but um, I think if we roll the rubber coating over the flat part where it's not peeling up, we'll be okay. So we're going to start by taking off all the crack stuff around these various vents and things. And um, oh, there's like a silicone dust storm right in my face. <laughs> um, it's very windy. Um, so we're going to start with taking off all of the covering that's cracking up around the vents and then 
assess from there, probably reseal and put on some coating. All right, ran out to the garage for a minute to show you a couple of the products that we're gonna be using here on the roof. Since we have a black roof right now with that asphalt and we don't think we're gonna be able to get it all off, we're gonna cover it first with this primer. Um, it says interior exterior, sticks to all surfaces. It's supposed to have high adhesion and stain blocking, which is one of the main things that we need that for. So when we put on the top coat, which this is what we're planning to use, this Blackjack Eternicoat. We don't want the black from the current roof covering to leach up through it as much as possible. We'd like the top to stay white. And this one said that it's actually made for flat roofs. Um, I think it has like a 50 year or, or oh, nope, lifetime warranty. So um, I don't think we'll have the lifetime warranty. We didn't buy the actual Blackjack primer. I couldn't find it. They do make a primer. Um, but this stuff's supposed to be pretty good. It's supposed to actually be okay with pooling water. So I, I did some research on some of the other, a lot of people use Tropicool um, or the Elasticode or the Dicor product. And a lot of those are not meant for flat roofs, weirdly enough, um, and not meant for pooling water. So we're hoping this one does the trick. And if it doesn't, we're okay with coming back and replacing the whole roof and putting on a whole new membrane. But for now, we're hoping that this will work and actually not have to do anything to it after that. And while we're talking about it, this video is actually sponsored by Jack's College Fund. <laughs> Just kidding. We don't have a sponsor, but if anyone would like to click subscribe, that, that will help us. Um, this stuff's not cheap so any any help we can get is great <laughs> you didn't want to go to college anyway did you no <laughs> you didn't <laughs> let's see your talent <laughs> is this a thing is this what kids do <laughs> he's trying to flick a toothpick and stick it in the foam Apparently this is what happens when you tell your kids it's a nice day and they shouldn't be on their electronics. <laughs> they learn valuable skills. This is looking really, really nice. <laughs> oh, well, it's looking like a lot of work. Um, this silicone underneath here, I don't know how far it goes underneath the actual uh, tar, tar type of material. I've got my edge of my roof vent exposed here and I was hoping to be able to just kind of get this stuff away enough that we could do like a lap sealant or the uh what is it the Eternabon tape and uh try to cover up these seams here but right now I definitely got to keep peeling back to, to get to the edge of this silicone yeah look at this I don't think we can coat over that so Definitely can see why it was leaking. Look at that come up. Oh my gosh. Christy's back here digging away at the old luggage rack. <laughs> <laughs> It appears we're going to take off more black than we initially anticipated. We might wind up trying to get it all off at this point. That escalated quickly. We'll see how stuck the rest of it is up front, but in back it's pretty loose. All right, so as we get into a little more sun today, it's definitely becoming more pliable. Um, but you can see what we're dealing with here in the back. There's like regular caulk or some kind of sealant that there was something weird like silver on top of that, some sort of a silver roof coating. And then on top of that, they came back through with this stuff. Um, but you can see here how the, the aluminum roof is underneath the 
back wall. Um, it's the same in the front where the roof actually runs under the wall. So obviously taking out that aluminum is going to be quite an ordeal. So we're still hopeful that we can get this roof to the point where we'll be able to salvage it with a rubber roof coating. Look at that. Weird. Oh my gosh. I don't know how people can be roofers for a living. It's like noon and it's only of like high of 70 today. And up here on this black roof, it is so hot. What is that? That's that's bacon. Oh. <laughs> it's called roof bacon. <laughs> You're frying roof bacon. Mm, take take a bite. Yeah. <laughs> oh shoot. Ooh. Ooh, molasses. Oh yeah. They used a little bit of molasses to keep it all together. It's not the worst idea. I'm assuming whoever uh did the roof work was the same one that did the bathroom remodel. Bathroom remodel? Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like, that bathroom hasn't been remodeled. Oh, yeah. that's sad. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't think we should be on the same part of the roof structure together anymore. Yeah. So, uh, All right. Good luck. Yeah, you too. Little stuff. Status update here. Got a lot happening. Um, we still need to take off the cover for the AC, but hello. Hey. <laughs> Good times are had by all. Yeah. So I'll start cleaning up some of this debris and see you later. Hey, that, here comes the oh, big moment. Ah, no, I think oh, it's... No, the moment. I think oh, she's man. glued down. Well, oh, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. And you wanted me to be... Oh boy! 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 Holy cow! Oh! Oh no! Yikes! Hey, how about that? Look on! Look at! Oh! Oh my gosh! Okay, that was kind of actually dumb to just yank. Oh my gosh! We could be dead right now if these were live. Are they? Are there well, any? I don't see any live ones, but then again, I think I see a whole bunch inside the uh, the actual fan. More uh, of those. Yeah. More, homes. More homes. Oh um, my gosh! Well, look at you. Yeah, slight as a feather, <laughs> but holy cow! Yeah. That scared me. <laughs> so, like, I was picturing like a swarm coming at my face. Right. Oh yeah, that could have been a could have been a thing. Um, oh, do you see all the dead ladybugs? <laughs> yeah, see. Look at this. Oh. Oh, golly! <laughs> it's amazing. Well, that was definitely crazy. We, uh, there's no bolts here on the outside that are visible to us, so we'll go down inside the, the camper and uh, take the cover off of the AC unit down there and hopefully find exposed bolts down there. And I got a new collar for this vent. I'm trying to get this old one off. Trust me though, when I say this is not the best scent. I think we've got it scraped to the point where we're ready to blow it off, to clean it off for a wash. Let her rip. So we filled about a whole trash bag here with roofing materials. So that's definitely a weight reduction. 
One of the reasons we didn't want to go a whole new wooden roof over this is the weight problem. problem. <laughs> I mean, with RVs, you want to keep them as light as possible. So even this 20 pound bag of tar coming down is a big win. And then, you know, whatever we put on kind of offset that, but at least we're not, not going to add a whole bunch of weight. For every hundred pounds of weight reduction, we can take a 10th off the, um, take a 10th of a second off in a quarter mile. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're going for? Best quarter mile I mean, time? it's got a 440. Come on. Huh? It's got at least 200 horsepower. <laughs> we should put her in a drag race. All right, so this is about to happen. Um, I know on the video where we did the power wash, got it all clean. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, and we got the new wood wet. Some of you were tense about that. So I'm apologizing in advance. It's going to get wet again. But to be fair, the roof's been leaking for years. So hopefully this is the last time everything on the inside gets wet. And uh, we'll be sealing it up soon. Give it the scrub. Give it a quick rinse so we don't soak the inside. And then we got to run to the store to buy some things to patch holes. Got some dish soap and some degreaser kind of automotive cleaner in there. So in the last video, I mentioned that I thought Bruce Springsteen and Rick Springfield were related. <laughs> I think it was just because of their names. I thought, because I don't know. In my mind, they were just related. Well, someone comments, there is apparently a song, Rick Springfield, called Bruce. And I guess it's a common thing. I thought it was just a weird thing for me. But no, I thought it was weird. Apparently, that is like a, a thing that people confuse it to. I don't know. Wild. So you're not abnormal after all. So I'm super normal. <laughs> <laughs> Moral of the story. You are soaking this. I oh, thought we were trying not to go too I, crazy oh, with it. Well, I lose uh, track of stuff and I get carried away. Holy moly. Well, I think I'll hit pause here because I don't know if anyone wants to watch this for 10 minutes, but we'll come back when we're about ready to rinse it off. Okay, we had a development. <laughs> <laughs> You might have seen the video where I glued this G back on. We were so excited to find it. Oh, the D fell off just now. I'm gonna have to stick it back on. So we're headed back from the store. It's raining. Gotta get the tarp back on the RV. And we're very much looking forward to having the roof done so we don't have to worry about rain and the tarp. And that's going to do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully get a coat of primer on this baby. Yeah. We're taking a little break from the RV. We've got a daughter playing in a flag football game at Ford Field where the Detroit Lions play. So it's pretty exciting stuff. And hopefully they win. Yeah, big time. <laughs> So I get this text from Christy earlier today. He said he will accept all offers. I'm thinking to myself, oh boy, here we go. So we've been looking at this house. It's a rundown house. Possibly going to refurbish that. Um, probably more likely tear it down and start over. But anyway, bring all offers. So she has me intrigued. And then there's a link down below that text I click on that it's a travel trailer 1973 holiday rambler I'm like that was out of left field so lo and behold we're driving to go look at a holiday rambler we should be there in just a minute oh we're on another bumpy back road um, we didn't mention anything about filming so I'll try to show you as much as we can um, might have to be discreet. It's not? Oh, there's two of them. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> there she is. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, look at this driveway. All right, should we stop here? I mean, we're in the muck puddle. If we, yeah, we might have to pull through. All these coffee cans. It would be interesting to see what, um, like other pictures online of what the layout would have been like. Stove's pretty sweet. Yeah. Old, uh, oh, it's, cold one. Nice. Oh, it's that avocado color. So we went to a football game, the team won. Went to check out another camper, and I bet you're wondering if we bought it. So you're going to have to stay tuned in this video, and we'll tell you later. But for now, we have got to get back up on this roof and get some primer on there. Right. The AC unit has to come down, a couple vents. I'm still putting a couple screws up there to make sure everything's buttoned up, but uh, I think it's getting close. <laughs> Here, bunny. Uh, I don't think that's how it works. They don't come like kitties. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> the opposite. Oh boy. Ooh. Oh, not on the bed. Oh, <laughs> right. Ooh. Hey. Oh, we probably have to unscrew the inside still too, don't we? Um. Yeah. Good news is there's not a lot of rot here. I like that. It's great news. That is great news. There are a lot more bugs out now than when we started this a month ago. Oh, that is the bathroom. Making some progress getting the AC out of here. How heavy is it? It's a, definitely a two-man lift or a two-person lift. The issue is, how do you get it off of a camper top uh, down the ladder? I think... Just chuck like, it. Yeah, I could just shove it off. <laughs> we discovered a problem. Looks like it's time for a bug bomb. Now I need help. Okay. Okay, you guys got it? Yeah, okay. keep it centered. It's all on the strap right now. Okay, well, tell it us. is centered. Oh, my fingers. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Keep it coming. Okay. Okay, let so it down slow. Jack. This is going to be the part where I have to let go soon. You ready? No. You got it? Yep. Okay. Okay. Oh, all right. There you go. That was like a shower of ladybug particles. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to show you real quick a couple of the repairs we're going to make to the roof before we put the rubber roof coating on it. So as you can see, there's a couple of spots here and there where the actual um, metal roof has corroded due to moisture and has some holes in it. Um, that nice little puncture right there was uh, done by yours truly. This is the material we're going to be using for the roof patch. This is a 12 by 12 inch sheet of aluminum. Um, it is easily cut and I am going to cut a couple different patches here. What I'll wind up doing is using a bead of Proflex on the back side, however big the patch is, and then screwing that down with some lath screws into the roof. We'll come back over that with some uh, Eternabon tape to cover over the uh, the seams there and the screws and then of course we will put the rubber roof coating over all of it. Okay here's the patch with a, a pretty healthy bead of ProFlex sealant on the back there. Uh, it's about a half inch to three quarters of an inch in from the edge. What we'll wind up doing is pressing that into place. Um, I don't necessarily need the ProFlex to squeeze out of the uh, the edges or to the edges because we are going to be coming back over this with the uh, Eternabon tape. And that's what the patch looks like with the screws in it. So I think I've got the majority of my patches with the aluminum in place. They're all um, 
pro flexed, screwed down, everything's good. Now I'm taking my uh, Eternabon tape, it's a four inch tape. I'm gonna seal over some of the uh, screws that we've got uh, exposed here for say this vent and then I'm going to come back over my patches and also turn a bond tape uh, around the perimeter of those and then we're going to primer and then we're going to put on our rubber roof coating and then we're not going to have any more leaks <laughs> got the first coat of primer on. So what we need to do now is go to a softball scrimmage, let this dry, and check on it when we come back. It looks so much better already. Um, and if it doesn't have a bunch of brown and orange and whatever seeping up through the primer when we get back, then I don't think we'll need a second coat of primer and we'll be ready for the rubber roof coating. We are back, we're up on the roof. The primer's been drying for about two hours and it's actually looking really good. It doesn't seem like we've got too much of the black, actually none that I can really tell that's bled up and through. Um, and that's the main reason that we even used primer was to stop the stain from coming up through our final coat. So a um, couple more things to do tonight and then hopefully we'll be out here in the morning rolling on that final coat. I've got a couple roof vents I'm going to put on. I've got to put butyl underneath them, uh, just screw them down. But uh, it'll be a little bit too dark to probably film any of that. So with any luck, I'll do it tonight in the dark. Uh, and uh, like Christy said, we'll be back in the morning to put the final coat on. Good night. Good night. All right, it's the next morning. The sun's out. I was up there with a leaf blower. Everything seems to be clean and dry. All the patches are in place. We are ready to put on the turn a coat. Okay, we haven't opened this yet. I've read some reviews of people got getting their Eterna coat and it's just one big brick of rubber inside. So hopefully ours is still in liquid form. That would kind of put a end to our work time here. That would be a problem. Oh, the suspense. Oh, I can't even contain myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, hey, I'm trying it's to liquid. get my strings in it first thing. That'd be awesome. All right, so we're going to, we've got our drill uh, mixer. be better if we had it attached to a drill with a cord, but we're using the cordless, and we'll mix her up. Just want to dunk her in there? Yeah, I think. Oh, boy. Oh, that's soupy. All right, what are we thinking? I think it's pretty good. Feel good? Looking good to me. All right, let's do it. Ooh, that was <laughs> nice. Holy cow. And that's how you rubber dip your tools. Yeah. It's probably better than the cement dip we had on there. Right. So, yeah, do you give it like a spin inside that box? <laughs> to try to help get I'm, it off? I might as well just... Put it right in between my pant legs. <laughs> Back on the roof, hopefully for the last day. Got the new roof fence on. Tyler put those on last night. Um, we're going to start with a small area with the Eterna coat. Um, not sure how easy it is to spread. Some people said it's amazing. Some people said it's difficult. So we're going to start up front and hopefully roll our way back. So it's about 60 degrees and which gives us a little longer with our drying time. Um, I tried up front to pour some out of the big bucket under the roof and spread it out. And it is kind of hard to spread once it gets into a big puddle. So I have developed a new patented technique called the drizzle method, 
where I just dip this roller in the big bucket and spread it where I want it to go and then smooth it out. So it's really hard to know how thick to go. The final coat, one coat is supposed to be 22 mils. So I haven't measured. I'm just trying to go by like when I roll it that there's still some roller marks being made and it's not perfectly smooth. I feel like that's left a good amount of coating. And if I feel like there's an area that needs a little more, um, I'll go back and give it another drizzle. Also known as the Eterna Drizz. The <laughs> We got the roof coating on all before breakfast time. Um, we're gonna let it dry. The nice thing with this coating is if you, you know, touch it after it dries and you feel like you need another layer, you can just go back on and put more on. So we do have some left. We used probably between a half and a third of that bucket. So we probably could have gone a little thicker, but it um, seems like it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty thick up there. So, um, You'll have to subscribe to watch future videos. We'll update you on how well this lasts with all the crazy, you know, going from hot mopping right into this new fangled rubber roof coating. Um, we'll keep you posted on how it goes. And I don't think we told you yet, but you'll also want to subscribe to the channel because you can follow progress on our new 1973 Holiday Rambler. Yeah, so we ended up buying it. Um, coming up video, we'll do a walkthrough, show you kind of what's going on with that. But we're excited to get started on that one too. So um, we are more than happy to be finished with this roof. Still have to get the AC back up there, but that's going to happen another day. We appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned for the next one. Feels nice and dry. Of course, uh, feels about like what you would expect a rubber roof to feel like, but so far, very impressed. Looks really good. <laughs>